On the 2016 campaign trail, I met voters who rejected Donald Trump as a racist and others who embraced him for the very same reason. But the ongoing reporting of Alex Koch speaks to the Trump voter who tolerated his flaws in the hope that a Trump administration might drain the swamp of corporate influence on our government. Alex joins us now with some new information that could impact the confirmation process for a Trump appointee named Don Stump. Alex, thanks for joining us. And please tell us, if Trump gets Stump confirmed by the Senate, how will that impact our proverbial swamp? I definitely think this is a, a pretty perfect example of, of not draining the swamp, in fact, filling the swamp. Don Stump is, is the current nominee for the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. They regulate uh, financial derivatives such as commodity futures. Um, she is a former lobbyist for the Futures Industry Association, which is um, one of the primary lobbying groups for um, the commodity futures industry. So she'd be regulating the industry that she just recently, as of last year, was lobbying for. So her expertise is not necessarily in agriculture industry. It's I mean, in she, she did. Uh, she used to be a staffer in the Senate and I think then the House on the agriculture committees. But agriculture committees um, are the ones that oversee the, the CFTC commission. Um, because originally commodity futures were, were uh, farm agriculture products like corn and soybeans. But uh, Dawn Stump, early in her career, she was in the government. She was a staffer for Texas Senator Phil Graham, who is one of the authors of a bill, the House version of which ended up passing in, in late December of 2000. Bill Clinton signed it into law, and it exempted a lot of kind of risky trading practices in the derivatives markets from regulation. And then eight years later, the, the, the global economy crashed because of very risky mortgage-backed securities and things like that. Um, so Dawn Stump went on from government to become a lobbyist. I believe in 2005 or six, she was lobbying for the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and then she ended up lobbying for the Futures Industry uh, Association. To make matters worse, her husband, who actually used to work in government, is the top lobbyist for Monsanto, the giant grain company uh, in seed manufacturer that trades in commodity futures. And this husband of hers has hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in Monsanto stock. Um, also has stock options and a retirement plan uh, with Monsanto. So. Dawn Stump had to sign a letter that included a paragraph saying that she wouldn't personally intervene in, in matters pertaining to Monsanto. Whether or not that happens, we'll see. But we certainly can't control what she and her husband are telling each other in the comfort of their own home if she becomes a, a commissioner. Well, let's pretend we're in the comfort of the Stump family home. And let's say that uh, we want to make sure this family is going to be OK for generations. How could being both inside the government and also uh, a part of Monsanto benefit this family? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, certainly Monsanto is a big player in the commodity futures market. Um, presumably, uh, they, like other large corporations that do this kind of uh, trading, would benefit from less regulation, more freedom to do the kinds of investments they want with a, a already someone who's uh, preconditioned to not favor strict regulation of this kind of thing, comes from lobbying for that industry. Her husband is part of the industry, essentially. They're invested in the industry. Uh, I'd be willing to, to bet that uh, she's more likely than not to do things on the commission that would benefit Monsanto as a business and therefore benefit the financial health of her own family. And so, can you explain commodity futures to people and, and why it's something that we may want to have our government protect us from abuses? Sure. Uh, commodity futures, um, how it originated was in the grain markets, um, uh, you know, something that Monsanto is very involved in. So agriculture commodities like corn and soybeans, for example, um, the price of these commodities actually fluctuates quite a bit. A uh, natural disaster could hit an area. Uh, it could wipe out a lot of supply. Prices could go up because uh, of the shortage of that commodity. So um, what some agriculture companies do, and now it's it's expanded into other markets like oil and other uh, kind of fossil fuel commodities, they uh, are able to hedge against this price fluctuation by locking in prices uh, via contracts with buyers. Now, when this becomes problematic is when you have other interests um, betting on or even betting against these kinds of deals. So a lot of times you have Wall Street firms which have no interest in the health of, of for example, the, the grain market or the corn market, but they just want to make money. So they're actually betting against 
uh, these deals uh, and, and um, destabilizing the market. So like, could Monsanto itself bet or speculate on futures while actually influencing the market through its production? I believe so, yes. And, and it's unclear whether Monsanto is speculating. I asked them directly several times and they wouldn't answer. Um, they do state in their uh, SEC forms that uh, they do a lot of commodity futures trading that's really important to their business model, and that's not unsurprising. Um, but whether they speculate, we don't know. Um, however, I did talk to an expert who said uh, it's very likely they are speculating. Um, they're a big player in, in the market, and um, you know, they're, they're a massive firm that uh, might be sort of using that process to make more money. So let's say you voted for Donald Trump and you're getting some of the social agenda issues addressed that you, you wanted addressed. What does it matter if the Stump family is enriching themselves um, in public service? Well, I mean, I think certainly there's income inequality that comes into that. But I think more important is is that this kind of risky trading and speculation is what brought down the economy in 2008. And there haven't been enough safeguards put into place to prevent that from happening again. They were using some of these similar financial tools that are used for commodity futures trading, um, which are also supposed to be regulated by the CFTC, this commission we're, we're talking about. So you have not only those personal conflicts of interest, but you have the greater uh, risk of another recession, this time probably uh, relating to things like student loan debt, auto loan debt, and credit card debt. You know, this, these are the kinds of things that the CFTC should be uh, regulating strictly uh, to prevent another crash. Uh, but you have someone who actually helped author legislation in 2000 that, that led to the financial crash, now coming in, potentially coming into this commission um, it, with the mindset of, of deregulating things. So Don Stump's confirmation process, I understand it's been delayed by about a year. Explain why and also tell us what are the chances that she won't be confirmed? I believe she's expected to be confirmed, but we, you know, we really don't know yet. Um, she hasn't, she had a, um, a committee hearing, but she hasn't been, a, had a full Senate hearing. Um, originally there were, she was uh, among a slate of Trump nominees uh, last year, uh, one of them was was already in the commission, and he was nominated to be the chair, and he is now the chair. That's Giancarlo. Um, two others were were confirmed. Um, one of whom is a Republican, one of whom is a Democrat. So uh, the the commission is supposed to have five members, three of whom are the president's political party, and two of whom are are the opposing major party. So right now it's two to one Republicans to Democrats. Um, uh, I don't think it would fit within the confines of, of that commission's rules to have another Republican and make it a three to one uh, disadvantage for Dems. So what they're doing is they're packaging her nomination with another uh, nomination of a Democrat, which just came through last week. Um, so she's been basically waiting, uh, you know, almost a year to be confirmed until they could find a, a Democrat who Trump would nominate. Now, they have found this person. I don't know a lot about him, but um, I think he was favored by the Democrats. Um, so perhaps they're pairing a very conflicted Republican nominee with a perfectly average Democratic nominee in order to get them both through and have a full committee that will have a very deregulatory majority. We'll just have to depend on two of the other Republican appointees having some loyalty to ethics or to the, to the country as a whole that supersedes personal financial interests of their fellow commissioner. And it's not really clear that they're they're really any more concerned with ethics than Don Stump is. I don't know, um, but Chairman Giancarlo is definitely on the deregulation side of things. Uh, one economist I talked to was at a conference that the CFTC held, and and Giancarlo expressed excitement at the prospect of Don Stump joining the commission. Um, so I think uh, she's essentially going to be complementing and and making worse the deregulatory agenda that already exists at the CFTC. I'm always interested in the genesis of articles like this. Was this something that our managing editor, Jonathan Larson, said, hey, Alex, go get him, or did you uncover this yourself? A little of both. He actually put me onto the CFTC to look at oil prices, uh, which is another issue that they have to oversee in some aspects, because oil is also a commodity that's, that's involved in futures trading. Um, I didn't find a whole lot going on at the time. There is some talk about OPEC now. Actually, Trump is tweeting about it. So um, that could be a, a salient issue as well. But uh, in the process of, of looking into the agency, I, I often look at the nominees. I mean, this is something that any journalist should do during any administration, but especially now, there's so many glaring conflicts and they're very easy to find. 
So I, I looked at her her uh, background, I looked at her financial disclosure, and it was pretty obvious that her husband was uh, a high-ranking lobbyist at Monsanto and was personally invested in the company. Um, so that's sort of how it came about, was just looking at the agency overall and trying to find the areas that are pretty glaring and, and need exposure. I mean, the reason that she has to have a little paragraph in her ethics agreement that states she won't uh, participate in matters relating to Monsanto is because it's a huge conflict. And there's got to be other people who don't have those same conflicts that can do the job that Stump is probably going to be doing. Uh, and that's the problem with with the Trump administration is these glaring conflicts of interest and all these ethics waivers that are given to, uh, for example, food industry lobbyists who are now helping the USDA set policy, something that we've talked about uh, at TYT before. Um, these are not the only people who can do these jobs. There should be people out there who are being consulted and, and nominated who don't have conflicts, have the you know, requisite uh, knowledge of the industries that they're working on, but don't actually have personal financial stakes in those industries. Okay, but it's clear. They're seeking out people who do have these financial interests. They do have these conflicts. Why is the Trump administration doing this? Well, I mean, Trump is a businessman. That's that's his lifelong identity. Um, he is absolutely involved with uh, a lot of shady characters throughout his career. On a day-to-day -day basis, we're, we're seeing more and more um, evidence of, uh, of potential fraud and other things that, that Trump has done as a business person and his associates have done, including his son-in-law and his son-in-law's father, um, the, the Kushner family. Um, but, you know, we have a, a cabinet that's, that's dominated by wealthy uh, multimillionaires and billionaires. And, um, you know, it, it makes sense that, that that kind of mindset would sort of infect the entire administration uh, when you have even in the transition period before Trump was was actually sworn into office and he staffed his uh, advisory panels with tons and tons of corporate interests including a lot of people who work for uh, right-wing think tanks like the Heritage Foundation that also receive money from uh, these big businesses and are staffed with uh, people who have big business interests in mind and are not concerned with things like wealth inequality income inequality